The Valley Campaigns of 1864 were American Civil War operations and battles that took place in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia from May to October 1864. While some military historians divide this period into three separate campaigns, they interacted in several ways, so this article considers all three together. Background <inaudible> 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 As 1864 began, Ulysses S. Grant was promoted to lieutenant general and given command of all Union armies. He chose to make his headquarters with the Army of the Potomac, although Maj. Gen. George G. Meade remained the actual commander of that army. He left Maj. Gen. William Tecumseh Sherman in command of most of the Western armies. Grant understood the concept of total war and believed, as did Sherman and President Abraham Lincoln, that only the utter defeat of Confederate forces and their economic base would bring the war to an end. Therefore, scorched earth tactics would be required in some important theaters. Grant devised a coordinated strategy that would strike at the heart of the Confederacy from multiple directions. He would join with Meade and Maj. Gen. Benjamin Butler to fight against Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia near Richmond, Maj. Gen. Franz Siegel would invade the Shenandoah Valley and destroy Lee supply lines, Maj. Gen. Sherman would attack Joseph E. Johnston's Army of Tennessee, invade Georgia and capture Atlanta, and finally Maj. Gen. Nathaniel P. Banks was assigned to capture Mobile, Alabama. <laughs> Lynchburg Campaign May -June 1864. The first campaign started with Grant's planned invasion of the Shenandoah Valley from the Department of West Virginia, which Gen. Siegel commanded. West Virginia remained loyal and had been admitted to the Union, despite the Confederate Jones Imboden raid the previous summer. Grant ordered Siegel to move up the valley, i.e., southwest to the higher elevations, with 10,000 men to destroy the Confederate Railroad, Hospital and Supply Center at Lynchburg, Virginia. Topic. New Market May 15. Siegel was intercepted by 4,000 troops and cadets from the Virginia Military Institute under Confederate Maj. Gen. John C. Breckinridge and defeated. His forces retreated to Strasburg, Virginia. Maj. Gen. David Hunter replaced Siegel, and as discussed below would again strike southward, eventually burning VMI in retaliation for the jones Imboden raid as well as subsequent actions of VMI cadets. <laughs> Piedmont June 5 Hunter resumed the Union offensive and defeated William E. Grumble. Jones at the Battle of the Piedmont, Jones died in the battle, and Hunter occupied Staunton, Virginia. On June 11, Hunter, who had continued to strike southward, fought at Lexington against John McCausland's Confederate cavalry, which retreated to the mountains and Buchanan. Hunter ordered Col. Alfred N. Duffier's cavalry division to join him in Lexington. While awaiting their arrival, Union forces burned former Governor John Letcher's home, as well as shelled and burned the Virginia Military Institute. They seized the statue of George Washington, and nearly destroyed the campus VMI moved classes to the Richmond Alms House, joined by Duffy on June 13, Hunter sent Averill to drive McCausland out of Buchanan and capture the James River Bridge. However, McCausland burned the bridge and fled. Hunter joined Averill in Buchanan on June 14 and on June 15 advanced via the road between the peaks of Otter to occupy Liberty that evening. Meanwhile, Maj. Gen. John C. Breckinridge sent Brig. General John D. Imboden and his cavalry to join McCausland. Breckinridge arrived in Lynchburg the next day. Maj. Gen. Daniel Harvey Hill and Brig. General Harry T. Hayes constructed a defense line in the hills just southwest of the city. When McCausland fell back, Averill's cavalry pursued, engaging in the afternoon skirmish at New London Academy. Union forces launched another attack on McCausland and Imboden that evening, and the Confederates retreated from New London. Topic. Lynchburg June 17 to 18 Gen. Jubal A. Early and his troops arrived in Lynchburg on June 17 at 1 p.m. 
Although Hunter had planned to destroy railroads and hospitals in Lynchburg, as well as the James River Canal, when Early's initial units arrived, Hunter thought his forces outnumbered. Hunter, short on supplies, retreated back through West Virginia. Topic Early's Washington Raid and Operations Against the B&O Railroad June -August 1864, Robert E. Lee was concerned about Hunter's advances in the valley, which threatened critical railroad lines and provisions for the Virginia-based Confederate forces. He sent Jubal Early's Corps to sweep Union forces from the valley and, if possible, to menace Washington, D.C., hoping to compel Grant to dilute his forces against Lee around Petersburg, Virginia. Early was operating in the same area that Thomas J. Stonewall Jackson had in his successful 1862 Valley Campaign. Early got off to a good start. He drove down the valley without opposition, bypassed Harper's Ferry, crossed the Potomac River, and advanced into Maryland. Grant dispatched a corps under Horatio G. Wright and other troops under George Crook to reinforce Washington and pursue Early. Monocacy July 9. Early defeated a smaller force under Lew Wallace near Frederick, Maryland, but this battle delayed his progress enough to allow time for reinforcing the defenses of Washington. Fort Stevens July 11 Early attacked a fort on the northwest defensive perimeter of Washington without success and withdrew back to Virginia. <laughs> Heaton's Crossroads July 16. Union cavalry attacked Early's supply trains at Percival as the Confederates withdrew across the Loden Valley towards the Blue Ridge Mountains. Several small cavalry skirmishes occurred throughout the day as the Federals attempted to harass Early's column. Topic: <laughs> Cool Spring, July 17 to 18. Also known as Snickers Ferry, Early attacked and repulsed pursuing Union forces under Wright. Topic. Rutherford's Farm July 20. A Union division attacked a Confederate division under Stephen Dodson Ramser and routed it. Early withdrew his army south to Fishers Hill, near Strasburg, Virginia. Topic. Second Kernstown July 24. Wright withdrew, thinking Early was no longer a threat. Early attacked him to prevent or delay his return to Grant's forces besieging Petersburg. Union troops were routed, streaming through the streets of Winchester. Early pursued and burned Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, along the way in retaliation for Hunter's previous destruction in the valley. <laughs> Folks Mill August 1. also known as the Battle of Cumberland. An inconclusive small cavalry battle in Maryland. <laughs> Morifield August 7. Also known as the Battle of Oldfields. Confederate cavalry returning from the Chambersburg burning were surprised in the early morning and defeated by Union cavalry. Sheridan's Shenandoah Valley Campaign August -October 1864. Grant finally lost patience with Hunter, particularly his allowing Early to burn Chambersburg, and knew that Washington remained vulnerable if Early was still on the loose. He found a new commander aggressive enough to defeat Early, Philip Sheridan, the cavalry commander of the Army of the Potomac, who was given command of all forces in the area, calling them the Army of the Shenandoah. Sheridan initially started slowly, primarily because the impending presidential election of 1864 demanded a cautious approach, avoiding any disaster that might lead to the defeat of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Guard Hill August 16. Also known as Front Royal or Cedarville. 
Confederate forces under Richard H. Anderson were sent from Petersburg to reinforce Early. Brig. General Wesley Merritt's Union Cavalry Division surprised the Confederate columns while they were crossing the Shenandoah River, capturing about 300. The Confederates rallied and advanced, gradually pushing back Merritt's men to Cedarville. The battle was inconclusive. Topic: <laughs> Summit Point, August 21st. Also known as Flowing Springs or Cameron's Depot. Early and Anderson struck Sheridan near Charlestown, West Virginia. Sheridan conducted a fighting withdrawal. Topic: <laughs> Smithfield Crossing, August 25 to 29. Two Confederate divisions crossed Opequan Creek and forced a Union cavalry division back to Charlestown. Topic: <laughs> Berryville, September 3 to 4. A minor engagement in which Early attempted to stop Sheridan's march up the valley. Early withdrew back to Opequan Creek when he realized he was in a poor position for attacking Sheridan's full force. Topic 3rd Winchester September 19th. Also known as the Battle of Opequan. While Early had his forces dispersed, raiding the B&O Railroad, Sheridan struck near Winchester, Virginia. Sustaining ruinous casualties, Early retreated from the largest battle in all three of the campaigns, taking up defensive positions at Fisher's Hill. Topic. Fisher's Hill September 21-22 Sheridan hit early in an early morning flanking attack, routing the Confederates with moderate losses. Early retreated to Waynesboro, Virginia, with early damaged and pinned down, the valley lay open to the Union. And because of Sherman's capture of Atlanta, Lincoln's re-election now seemed assured. Sheridan pulled back slowly down the valley and conducted a scorched earth campaign that would presage Sherman's march to the sea in November. The goal was to deny the Confederacy the means of feeding its armies in Virginia, and Sheridan's army did so ruthlessly, burning crops, barns, mills, and factories. Topic: <laughs> Tom's Brook, October 9. As Early began a pursuit of Sheridan, Union cavalry routed two divisions of Confederate cavalry. Cedar Creek October 19th. In a surprise attack, Early smashed two-thirds of the Union Army, but his troops were hungry and exhausted and fell out of their ranks to pillage the Union camp. Sheridan, in a ride from Winchester, managed to rally his troops and utterly rout Early's men, and the Confederates lost everything they had gained in the morning. This victory helped Lincoln get re-elected. Aftermath After his missions of neutralizing Early and suppressing the Valley's military-related economy, Sheridan returned to assist Grant at Petersburg. Most of the men of Early's corps rejoined Lee at Petersburg in December, while Early remained to command a skeleton force. His final action was defeat at the Battle of Waynesboro on March 2, 1865, after which Lee removed him from his command because the Confederate government and people had lost confidence in him. See also Field of lost shoes Notes